All right, so after restarting my computer, we're back again. So what I wanted to show was the input file, the geo file for the GMesh file, and here it is. So you can see all we've done is define the eight points. These are actually the points here, and you can see, actually, you can directly edit this. So for example, here is the actual geometry. Watch this. If I want to shift a point, well, let's take point one. That's this point. And I can actually move it down in Y minus one. So now it's down at the two minus one zero. So when I go to GMesh and I reload it, you can see that point has moved down. And then every line connected to that would also move down. So we do reload. So you, you can do that to um, edit the file directly. Okay. Um, like I said, another useful one is also to have the uh, parameter. Like let's say we wanted to define a parameter for the element size. The LC, that's the characteristic line. Let's change that to be 0.5. Okay, so we add. Now, if you go into here, you can see that whoops, did it twice. the text file automatically added that parameter into it. So I can just rearrange it a little bit. So here's LC, and now we can change all these to be actually LC. These are the characteristic element sizes for those points. And now, if I choose to change the element size to say 0.05, all I need to do is change LC and regenerate the mesh. So that's kind of a nice trick. Okay? So sometimes it's actually it's, it's useful to directly edit the geo file. You don't have to. Okay, so let's go back to creating our geometry. Here's our mesh. I'm sorry, here's our sketch. And then here's the geo file. So now let's create some lines to connect up the points. So again, it's under geometry, elementary entities, and we're going to add a new line. OK, so let's add lines. And to do that, you just connect the points. So the first line is going to go from here to here. Second line is going to go from here to here. Oops. Third line, fourth line, fifth line. And then the sixth line goes here. Now you can see all those things showed up. Here's line, connects. Lines just defined as connecting the node IDs. And then we can also define an arc. Where's arc? Circle arc. Okay, so when you do a circle arc, it's kind of weird. First, it always is going to try to do them counterclockwise. You have to pick a start point, a center point, and then an end point of the arc. And you can look up here, it gives you the cue as to what you're supposed to do. So first select the start point, then select the center point, and finally select the end point. And there's our arc. And you can see here it showed up down here. All right. So now that we have the uh, lines, I can actually if I were just to mesh this, it would simply just mesh the lines with one-dimensional elements and not mesh the interior. Uh, that's because what I have here is just lines. I need to actually generate uh, a surface between these lines. So in 2D, it's quite easy. Uh, again, we're going to go to Geometry, Elementary Entities, add a new, but now uh, a planar surface. So you can have other types of surfaces, like a ruled surface that exist out of the plane, but most often we have planar surfaces. So we're going to select that. All you need to do is select the boundary, okay? And it'll try to figure out a boundary, and if not, you might have to pick it to prompt it. Now, you could also have interior holes, and you can see the second part here is to select the hole boundaries, and you can have multiple hole boundaries. In our case, we don't have any, so it says press E to end the selection. And there you go. Now you can see there's a little bit of a gray sort of uh, dash that indicates it's a plane here. And if we look down in the 
.geo file, you can see I've got a line loop. That's just a loop of lines, obviously. <laughs> and that defines the planar surface. So you can see planar surface ID9 refers to line loop 8. All right. OK, now we've got the geometry. Oops, didn't mean to do that. You can actually mesh. So if we just go to the mesh meshing module, all you really need to do is just hit 2D, and it'll generate a mesh. All right. Now we can go back and change the LC, the character's length, from 0.5 to 0.25. And if we go back and reload the file, the geo file, right? Now you can go back to mesh and do this 2D. Did I not save this? I should have made those smaller. Is that about, that should be about the size of 0.25. I think that's about right. It doesn't quite look it. Hmm, I haven't. Let's see. Let's go back. Geometry. Reload. Get smaller. Hmm, that's kind of weird. What happened? Uh, let's check how much we have. Let's, let's just look at the, the parameter. It still has a point. Oh, you know, man, is there like a redefinition of that down here somewhere? Huh. It should work. That's weird. Let's, let's make it look small. Geometry, reload, mesh, 2D. Oh, I did it that time. I don't know. Maybe I had to do it a couple times. But see there, it changed the mesh and it made it smaller. So that's the nice thing about using parameters. You also could use a parameter to find like this length and use that point coordinates and all that if you want to. All right. So that's uh, the mesh. Uh, let's change it back to 0.25. Mesh again. Now the mesh does not save in the geo file. So if you want to save the mesh under the mesh module, you hit save. And you can see, oh, it got rid of it, but it told you that it wrote out the mesh file. And you can see under here, it wrote out the mesh file, same name, example one, but dot mesh. And now I can open that up with text editor. Obviously, I can open up the GMesh, but if we open up with the text editor, you can see what we have. Here it is. So now this is quite a different format. Here we have the nodes. So this little dollar sign nodes means we're going to define nodes. It defines 148 nodes, and here's the node ID and the coordinates. And you can see those are all the nodes. And then likewise, we can go to another point where we define elements, and this is the actually element connectivity matrix. It has a, it's a little, it's got some other fields in it. It's got an element ID type of element, uh, some other parameters, and finally the connectivity, okay? But this is actually the file that stores the mesh, the dot mesh. This is the one that stores the geometry, all right? Okay, so that's pretty much it. But there is one other twist I do want to mention, and this is the notion of physical IDs, okay, or physical groups. This is actually pretty important. So, um, this wrote out a bunch of elements, but if you remember back when I first talked about the problem, I said, well, we need to define natural boundary conditions here and essential boundary conditions here. And you might have other boundary conditions, or you might have interior regions that are made up of one or more materials. So you need some way of grouping elements. So for example, we want to deal with the line elements just on this edge. And then we also want to deal with the triangular elements that are in the interior, and maybe the node IDs on this edge. So we need ways of kind of grouping geometries. This is the role of physical IDs. And in fact, the MATLAB function that I wrote that reads in the GMesh file only wants to deal with physical IDs. So we've got to talk a little bit about it. So you can see actually here when we do geometry, there's two types, elementary and physical. So uh, 
everything we've created so far is an elementary entity. Um, the physical ones are the ones that physically are going to be dealt with. They have some physical significance to them. And once you define them, they're the only things that get written out to the mesh file. So they're just made up of elementary entities. So let, let me reload it, get rid of the mesh, and you'll see what I mean. So the first group we want to do is the physical ID for the interior. So that's going to be the domain. That'll have an ID, and we'll have to make note of that. The next physical ID group we want to deal with is we're going to make a physical group of the elements on this edge. And that's where we're going to apply the essential boundary condition. Then we're going to make a physical group of the elements along this edge. Lines 5, 7, and 6. Save that as one physical group. And that's going to be the region where we store the natural boundary condition. Okay? Maybe we had a, you know, this split down this line. This is one material and this is another material. So I'd have one physical group for these elements and another physical group for these elements so that I can deal with them separately and assign different material properties accordingly. Okay? Well, we're not doing that here, but, but it's, the, it's that idea. So we do need to define physical groups. Okay? So let's do that. So first, we're going to do, they're all under geometry, physical groups. We're going to add. And now you can either add physical points, lines, or surfaces. Okay? So first, let's do a surface. Well, and volume, too, if we do 3D. So that's the first physical surface. It's only one surface, so we're done. So we're going to hit E to end the selection. All right, now we'll pick a physical line. Let's pick the top edge. Whoops, okay. That's it. That's the only one we want to do. So we're going to hit E. I'm going to wrote that. And finally, we're going to do another line, but this one's going to consist of these three lines. That's the natural boundary condition. And then we hit E. Now, if you go back to the text file, we scroll down, you can see those things are defined, okay? So the physical surface ID 10 is the, you know, we can actually even comment. It uses C kind of notation, so you can write in the file directly if you want to, to make note that physical surface 10 is the, the domain. Line 11 is the top edge. This is where we're going to apply essential boundary conditions. And then physical line 12 is the, um, well, that sort of corner edge. I don't know what to call it. And that's where we're going to define the natural boundary conditions. Obviously, this could change depending on your problem. Now, uh, you can go into GMesh, into options, and, and change the way things are labeled. Um, let me do geometry. And the nice thing to do, though, is if we go into Tools, Visibility, you can see here it gives a list of all the entities that we defined. And down here, you can toggle between elementary entities and physical groups. So here, for example, we can just view physical line 11. You can see that's that top edge, physical line 11. Or maybe just physical line 12. Or you know, everything. Okay? So you can check, you know, for more complicated things what you have. So now what this means is I have an ID tag that we're going to use when we read in the files. And so when I read in physical ID uh, 9, it's going to read in the element connectivity of the interior. When I read in physical ID 11, it's going to read in the elements on the top edge. When I read in physical ID 12, it's going to read in the line elements along this edge. Okay? All right. So now that we've defined those physical elements, we actually have to regenerate the mesh so that when it, it writes it out, it writes it out with the physical IDs. So let's see. Okay, we're going to re replace it. And now we can look at that again. Open, resend. There we go. 
So this is the resaved one. Doesn't change the node stuff any, but now if we look at, look at some of the elements. So here are some of the triangular elements. You can see this field here where they're all nine. That's the, I'm sorry, the, these are all 10. This field here, this is the physical ID. It's the first, second, third. It's the fourth field has the physical ID. So you can see all those elements have physical ID 10. If we go up and look at some of the line elements, you can see up here, these guys all have physical ID 11. So they're all grouped together. Then these have physical ID 12. So they're all grouped together as well. These are the line elements on that um, natural boundary condition edge. So you can see this is connects node 5 to 45, 45 to 46, so on and so forth. Okay? So you don't have to worry about the this file, but you know that, that format is what gets parsed into MATLAB. Alright? So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna st stop at this point because the next part just has to deal with reading in um, the mesh file into MATLAB. So we'll do that next. But you know, kind of get used to some of these concepts about the physical IDs, why we're doing it. Uh, try to make some other geometries. Again, be careful that you know that you have to save the mesh file. It's in a separate file than the geometry file. One of the nice things about GMesh is you, you do have this geometry file that you can directly edit. So for example, I could do stuff like this. See what let's let's make uh, let's let's we can define the the overall height here as h. So I can just do like h equals three. And now to control the h, that would basically move this node and this node up. And those are nodes three and four, the y coordinates. So you can go in here and you can take node three and four and I can put it h. Not 2H, H. All right? Now watch. When I go into geometry and I reload, you can see it's stretched it. And so we can use these types of things to generate parametric geometries. So I can change this back to 2, reload. And so it's really easy to generate meshes on variations of geometry. Okay? So that's a nice thing. Uh, you can also... Definitely do 3D geometries, uh, and it gets a little trickier when you're doing the 3D. You can do structured meshes. That gets a little trickier as well, but it's not too bad. So it's a nice middle range thing between uh, doing it by hand and using a more sophisticated preprocessor like HyperMesh, okay? All right. I'm stop now. And so the next video will be reading this into MATLAB.